quite like this uh, Serbo GX touchscreen, but I wonder how uh, it would improve or degrade depending on your point of view if I install GUI mods. Hi folks, I'm Roger from Off Grid, and uh, in this episode, uh, we're going to do the unthinkable and install GUI mods on our server GX. So if I take you through what's uh, on the screen at the moment, the red on the top left is our connection to the grid. And as you can see, we're pulling at 8 watts at the moment. So it's just changed to 10 watts, a very low amount of current that we're pulling off the grid. On the top right is the AC load that this is the power that we're actually using. If you like, this top is, is the multi-plus side of things. So coming from the grid and uh, going out to AC loads. And then on the bottom left, we have uh, the battery bank. And so if you have multiple batteries, you just add them all up in your shunt. So this is telling us some useful information. So we've got 94% of our bank left. Uh, we're currently putting in 321 watts, so 26 amps, and we're at sitting at 13.4 volts so and uh, this is the DC power that we're excuse me this is the DC power that we are drawing off the battery bank at the moment uh, and then these are what would be coming from the solar panels so quite a useful screen uh, uncluttered very simple at a glance we can see what is happening with everything and uh, quite nice really I quite like the screen the question is is GUI mods going to improve in it or actually make it a lot worse. Uh, what I do know is GUI Mods is going to make the screen look very, very busy. And on a five inch touch screen, which is what this is, maybe it's going to look too busy. Maybe it'll look a lot better on a seven inch screen or even bigger screen. Uh, there are some advantages to installing GUI Mods uh, because for example, here you click on that, uh, there's nothing you can do on there. You can go across and you can see, and but there's nothing you can actually do on any of these come back and uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to install GUI mods and uh, let's see if we don't like GUI mods then we'll uh, just uh, disable it. In order to install GUI mods there's something called a, a setup helper and it's a guy K Windron is his uh, uh, github account. There's a file that you need to copy onto a standard USB disk a USB stick and we'll put details below on where you download this and install it. Remember if you're running Safari operating system it will extract that file automatically so you don't want to do it using Safari or you want to turn that feature off. Probably easier if you've got Chrome or one of the others installed on your Mac than to use uh, something like that. If you're running Windows then it's not a problem but you need to simply, uh, I, I think these need to be form formatted to FAT and the file uh, place a single file that you place into the root of the USB and then you do the following. So that's ready to go. I'm going to just pull the power on my servo. So everything else is still running but the power is off the servo. I'm going to put my USB into here. Okay. Right, that's in. Now I'm going to repower this. We need to wait just a few minutes for everything to install. We finally have something coming up over here. So we now see green flashing here. There was amber for a while, but now it's gone back to green. And this starts for a second time. So it's like installed something and then restarted itself. So it's gone for the second time. Uh, same screen because we've just installed Setup Helper. If we go to the menu and we go to settings and we go all the way to the bottom, Package Manager is the one that I wanted to see. So Package Manager is up there. And as you can see, uh, if we go to Active Packages, nothing is there yet. So we come back. If we go to inactive packages, you'll see there are a bunch of things that um, are uh, not yet active. So these are the inactive packages. So we're going to click on that once, click on it a second time, and then we are going to say proceed. I think you need to click it a second time and then it comes off the inactive. And if we come back to active, we will see there. So 
So we need to click on that, click on the second time. Then, uh, as you can see, well, let's come back because it's not actually installed. So let's come back in Setup Helper and we are going to auto install packages. So rather than installing from a USB or something, we want to automatically install. So if we come to GUI mods, you can now see it's got a download option. It didn't have that before. We needed to activate that. So we click on download. And with uh, these, sometimes you're not sure if the first click works or if you do in the second click. In this case, it's a second click and then you need to hit proceed. And you're not sure again if the first click works, so you hit a second time and then it does work. So it's downloading GUI mods and install has just popped up. So you choose install and again, click it again, proceed and proceed again. That's installing it. So now you've gone, that's what's in GitHub. That's what's stored and the other one was uh, what is installed. So it's restarting this. One of the things you'll notice is that the settings goes to the top, which I actually prefer. I actually like seeing settings on the top. So let's see if there's an improvement. Go to the pages. It's a very busy screen. <laughs> I'm not sure that I actually like it. It's, it's gone from a very elementary machine uh, screen that told us everything we need to know to potentially a very busy screen. But I guess once you get used to it, I mean, one of the nice things you can actually say, right, I actually want to see more. So you click on that. Uh, that's not doing anything. Click on the battery. So it actually takes us to a lot of potentially useful information on the battery. We can go back there and let's say we're on the panels, we can click on the panels. It doesn't really tell us much more, but it does take us to a more detailed screen, the AC loads. And uh, let's see the DC draw. It's telling us some info there, but it's become a very busy screen on the inverter we can it's on we can turn it off we can do various things on the screen that we couldn't before uh, so in some ways quite handy and it's telling us a whole lot of useful information there so yeah as I said we've gone from a very simple elementary screen to quite a busy screen but to be honest it is telling us a lot of uh, handy information so uh, we're on 247 volts coming from the grid. We're using 1.4 amps. That's 50.4 hertz. Uh, we've limited to 32 amps. So all of that is actually quite useful information for us. So the question is, do we keep this or do we turn it off? Be interested to know what your thoughts are. So as usual in the comments below, tell us which you prefer and uh, we'll try and put a side-by-side side before and after in this video and you tell us what you think.